In this video, we're going to be playing the easiest strat to win with in high arenas in free power-ups. You'll see it's an extremely straightforward strategy and uh, it, it allows for really easy and fast wins at that in the highest arenas in free power-ups. So yeah, let's get right into it. So our first opponent is Bartek. Uh, I actually know this guy. He likes passive strategies. So if he readies up on Glacier Melt, we're probably not going to play that because this strategy is not usable on short maps. On short maps, I would probably recommend for an easy strategy that you go Knockout, Salted Wounds and Acid. Makes the most sense to me. Anyway. So it doesn't look like he wants to skip Glacier Melt. Oh, never mind, he does skip it. And we get Snowfall, which is a pretty good map to use this strategy on, so I'm going to ready up on it. He instantly readies up, he's going farms by the looks of it, and uh, who knows what he has in store for us. Of course he's very shocked, how unexpected. This strategy works extremely well against eco players by the way, just for the record. But uh, yeah, we're going to be sending probably a huge region rainbow rush, and uh, it could force death. Okay, so he has ninja and okay, my strategy is actually really good against his because it's very, very likely that he has copy eco. And since we have budget balloons instead of, for example, a super eco boost, uh, his copy eco won't do almost anything. We are actually not going to send at him the whole game after he gets up his double shot. It's simply not worth it. I'm just going to force that with some things. And uh, we're going to stay at that for the whole game. It will be very, very passive. So he's sending pinks at us. That's okay. We're just going to get up our purple dots eventually. He got up his double shot. And now we're going to completely stop sending for a, a very, very long time. He's now on 57 lives, which is actually not a lot. <laughs> but yeah, what makes the strategy so good is uh, the fact that you just need to press a few buttons and uh, that's the entire rush. As for what to knock out, my number one pro tip is to uh, simply uh, simply knock out whatever tower is their most expensive or like is contributing the most to their defense basically. Uh, how you identify that is very very easy, I don't think I need to tell you what contributes the most to a defense. For example, since he's probably going Ninja Farm Ace with Copy Eco, what would contribute the most to his defense would be his Ace, so that would be what I knock out. And uh, then it forces him to probably sell into a Sabotage, is what I'm guessing that uh, is what I'm guessing that's gonna do, but it should regrow very hard if he does that, so that's going to be completely okay for me. Also, uh, how you tell if a player has Copy Eco? Well, first of all, look at this, he's only sending space at me. So that means that we can greed as much as we want because he just has copy eco. And uh, this is not going to do anything. Now this is going to do something, but we can sell the farm. It's completely okay. I've said this in a previous video. So uh, yeah, go watch my previous videos for more tips if, um, if you feel like that's something you need. We're just going to keep on greeting like that because he has copy eco. And we want Copy Eco to send us Eco, obviously, so that his Copy Eco does nothing. Now that he sent us infinite balloons, we're going to just do this whole selling process again. He sends us a lead, that's completely okay. We're just going to get up this boomerang, that's all we need. He's probably going to lightning this, yep, he is. But uh, look at how low his farms are. That's, that's a very drained ninja farm ace. And yeah, he's probably going to get up a splash bomb to this. He does. And okay, now we're going to prepare the rush. I'm just going to wait for him to boost and instantly knock out. He rebuys it, but at this point it's going to regrow very hard on him. And uh, he probably dies, yep. And just like that, that's how you win with this strategy. It's really, really straightforward. Wait, why is he not dying? Is he DC glitching me? Wow. 
that's very savage. Okay. We just got DC glitched on. That's just a great first game, isn't it? What, what a... I mean, you're getting caught on video, buddy. <laughs> nice one. <laughs> anyway, I'm probably going to report this guy. Let's move on to the next one. Next up, we get Stritix. So I believe we matched this guy in the video before, actually. And uh, yeah, our powers don't change, our strategy doesn't change, our game plan doesn't change, you know the usual. He says hi. Uh, to explain what a DC glitch is, right, it's when your opponent disconnects intentionally uh, right after they're about to lose and then send a counter rush. And if the game goes on for long enough after they disconnect and you die, you end up uh, being the one to lose. Now, of course, this is banned. It can get your account banned. Don't do it. Uh, this guy's probably going to get banned for it, actually. And uh, yeah, d just don't abuse that. But it's just how you identify what the DC glitch is. I really advise not doing it yourself, though, because uh, what happened there was extremely obvious and uh, it can get your account banned. So just be really careful. So he's going Dotling and Farm, I'm expecting, since he's a grinder, that he's going to go Aggro Powers, probably Quick Shot Team Tower Stun or something like that. Uh, so the game plan against this kind of strategy would be to just all out round 13, honestly, there's really not many options there. And uh, just pray that he dies from it, because if he has Quick Shot Team Tower Stun, uh, we cannot defend that round 18. And yeah, that's really bad for us, so we're just going to need to all out and pray that it works. Although, considering how passively he's playing, that could be an issue. Because uh, we want him to play very aggressive. I don't know why... I, actually, he's playing very aggressive, but <laughs> he doesn't have Salted Wounds. This is a play you would do if you had Salted Wounds, which he revealed Super Eco Boost before, so I'm just confused. I wouldn't have greeted this hard if I had... Um, if I wasn't sure that he had Super Eco Boost, but yeah, I don't know why you would do this. Just send reds and force the Dotling earlier. Like, he let me have bananas for no reason, which is not what you want to do. You want to force defense uh, on your opponent so that they get the least farm farms possible while you get eco uh, by sending them balloons. And uh, yeah, it drains them and gives you a money advantage, so that's why forcing defense with some balloons is always worth it. And then uh, now he sends greens at us, which... Great stuff, he's just draining his farms even more. He has quick shot, as expected, it's probably Team Towerston. So we know what the game plan is in that regard, but yeah, we're going to sell this boomer, send him greens as hard as we can, force his own boomer, and then uh, yeah, make sure to give him some leaks with those blacks. That's going to make him leak because of round 7 AI, and it's probably going to hurt him a lot. So yeah, as, as you can see, he's leaking like down to 80 lives now, 70, it's going even lower. 66, 64, 61 even, okay, that's a lot of leaks, wow. Now we're just going to force his boomerang, there you go, that's a boomerang upgrade. Now he's going to force ours, but he doesn't send enough to force a tier 3, which uh, is well played on him actually, I, I would be doing this in his position. Okay, so he's running Super Eco Boost, uh, Quick Shot Team Tower Stun is my guess. So actually against Team Tower Stun, what you want to do if you have aggress aggressive powers, right? This is advanced stuff, but you want one of your boomers at the start, one of them at the end, something like this. This is uh, how you can defend Quick Shot Team Tower Stun without defensive powers, otherwise you pretty much need them. And it's complicated too because it requires micro, but... Uh, I guess I'm going to show you guys this defend. It's really cool to see, like in a match. Although by the looks of it, he's keep keeping his ricochet up, which is just really bad. I don't know why he's doing that, but uh, yeah. You want to upgrade this boomerang, actually. I completely forgot to do that. And he's probably going to send us something round 13, if I had to guess. If he doesn't and he just holds money, I'm going to rush eventually. I can exploit this ricochet very easily, by the way. You can just do this. Now, just like that, it's going to get exploited really hard. You might just die from this. I was considering knockout right there, but he got it up in time, so congratulations. He quick shots. No team tower stun, though. 
And now I really don't know what to do. This is a very bad position. I'm just going to all out this. That's the only play I can do. Okay, luckily he sold. This is going to push if he doesn't do anything about it. So he should have kept up his glaive load. That's his one mistake. And because of that, we win. <laughs> Amazing stuff. I would have knocked out his glaive load had he kept it up. But uh, yeah, this just pushed by and we got the win. Let's move on to the next one. Now we get Grey Road. <laughs> now that's my gen I know. <laughs> okay, this dude is one of my friends. He's a good grinder. He's really good at grinding. So I don't think I'm going to win this game because this loadout is good at exploiting noobs and not much else, but we're going to try, okay? So we're on Yellow Brick Road. This is a very good map for aggro powers. And uh, maybe if he doesn't know that Glaive Lord is the way to defend the strategy with aggro, he might lose, but I think he knows. So yeah, he starts with uh, Dartling as expected. I didn't expect anything else from him, really. He's always going to play aggressive powers because he's a good grinder. And uh, that's what you should do if you're good at grinding. You should always go aggro powers. So we're just going to send a small amount of balloons at him, probably 263, something like that. Force the powerful dots up. Uh, you don't want to leak too low in aggro mirror in case of quick shot team tower stun, but I'm going to do this sec like, defend where I don't have to get up my powerful loss and I still don't leak that much. Look at that, beautiful. And now I can get up my farm right away. And that's going to give me an extra banana that uh, he won't get. And it's also forcing him to send a lot more at me, which is really good. Now I'm going to gather my powerful dots like he did. Uh, this is all because he didn't send enough, by the way. So uh, yeah, make sure to send enough against the Dotling Boomer, that way they can't do this defend. And uh, they have to get up the powerful dots. But yeah, we're outplaying him in money by a fair bit now. Uh, he has higher eco, but that's not the thing that you want in Agramera. You want a higher, higher farms above everything else, really. He's running improved eco boost, probably because he didn't unlock super eco boost, because this is an alt account. So he's still going to have way more money than us in the long run, but yeah, he's already caught up to my farms, but uh, we're going to be okay. So he's sending blacks, which doesn't do anything to this spot. Okay, he sends greens now. That's good. So you should be, that's what you should have been doing from the start, but <laughs> we move, we move. Great stuff. GG's to Grey Road. He's a really good player. Let's move on to the next one. Okay, so this time we have nobody, and uh, by the looks of it, he has a lot of game play, a lot of games played, but not a lot of medallions. So, mm, okay, he had never had a top one hundred before. He only had top one thousand. He has decent global, rather low prestige. I expect this to be a passive player that not that is not playing like either to his to the best of his abilities or without the best loadouts possible so my strategy is probably going to be really good against this kind of opponent i just want to remind you guys of course that uh, this strategy is not really the most optimal one that you can play because it has a lot of inherent weaknesses like for example quick shot team tower stun just destroys the loadout and there is really not much you can do about it if uh, the player if the player facing you is any good. Uh, and also, on top of that, it has a lot of problems against uh, some passive loadouts, like for example, Tag Village. Uh, just this combo, all they need to do is rebuy a, re a village after you knock them out, and uh, then they can buy the Maelstrom and it has infinite peers, so you can't do anything against it. But uh, against Ninja Farm Ace with Copy Eco, for example, my loadout is really, really good. You saw it in the game where I got DC glitched. <laughs> he had to resort to literally cheating in order to beat me, which is kind of funny when you think about it. <laughs> the only solution that you can do to beat this loadout with Ninja Farm Ace is literally cheat. <laughs> How funny is that? <laughs> okay, so he has Lightning Volts. I'm just going to spam things, force this double shot as per usual. He has 60 lives already, which is very low. 
But uh, yeah, we're just going to force this double shot with enough pinks eventually, it's going to get by. He gets up his plantation already, which is very greedy, but I mean, I will take all the extra leaks in the world, bro. That is completely fine by me. He gets up his double shot, finally, and uh, he starts sending pinks at us, but that's completely okay. We can take the leaks, he should not, because he has the passive powers and we don't. Okay, so I would like a banana, preferably. There we go, now I can buy my powerful dots and defend. And now we're just going to aim the darling at the start of the track to anti-stall as usual. If you don't know what an anti-stall is, I'll just recap the definition because um, it's really important to these kinds of aggressive strategies. You really want to focus on anti-stalling. Uh, basically, you can make rounds shorter by popping uh, the AI balloons one layer of them. Uh, of all of the AI balloons, right? You can't miss a single one, but you only need to pop one layer and uh, you need to do that as fast as possible. Uh, that way the rounds are going to be very, very short. Your opponent and yourself will both have less money, but that's what you want since you have aggressive powers. Now uh, he does have copy eco, so that means I can greed safely. And uh, I don't know why every copy eco player here is sending me yellows. They really shouldn't be because that's wasting their, their powers, but uh, yeah, it looks like he's not going to send, so I'm just going to read this farm, and I'll let him do the same, because if he has no copy eco, then that's good for me. That's all I need, really. Okay, so we're just going to send leads now. I wouldn't be surprised if he... Okay, he has glue, actually, not ace. Wow, that's surprising. I don't see the strategy very often, but... It's not bad, I just find Ace to be better with it. I guess against defending my specific loadout though, probably Glue is better. However, I would play Super Eco Boost with this, not Copy Eco. It makes way less sense. So he uses up a Lightning again. And uh, we're going to force his uh, Camo Lead detection with these. Now we're going to use Budget Balloons. We're going to use camera rigor efficiency and we're going to send. We're going to knock out this glue, make sure he can't use the ability. Now we're just going to send and he dies instantly. Wow, that was really fast. See how strong this rush is? Okay, let's move on to the next opponent. Okay, we get Clarky 420. So this once again looks like maybe a grinder. Okay, if he is a grinder, he has some top 100, some top 100 prestige. So he's not that big of a grinder if he is one. Although there's a chance that he just isn't. But maybe with 56% win rate, it does hint towards aggressive powers. You're not going to go really high win rate if uh, you're playing aggressive powers the wrong way. So we get dungeon. And uh, this strategy on long maps is actually more usable uh, in comparison to like mid-length maps when you compare it, for example, to Quickshot Team Tower Stun. Then uh, this strategy already can see more use than, uh, than if you were playing Quickshot Team Tower Stun on a mid-length map, for example, because um, then the powers that I'm using right now don't make much sense. Um, because defending against aggressive powers yourself is possible on long maps uh, without defensive powers, but on mid-length maps it's way, way harder. And having Quickshot Team Tower Stun to at least counter some aggressive powers with Quickshot uh, makes way more sense than uh, the strategy which sends way slower balloons in comparison to the balloon powers that are out there. So he has Heli and Farm. I'm guessing that the third is Glue, although it could be Ace maybe. It could be Ice if he's really demonic, but I don't expect that. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much the towers that I'm expecting right now. Those are the combinations that make the most sense. We're going to send blues at him because it's going to force a quad darts eventually. Then as per usual, we really don't care about leaking lives. So we're going to tank these pinks. As long as he wants to send, that's okay. Okay, we can't get our powerful dots just yet. I was expecting us to afford it, but never mind. Now we do afford it though. And uh, he just lightnings this. Okay, 
that's unexpected. But then that means we're just going to wait until round six because he probably has copy eco, I'm guessing. Uh, the fact that we're running budget booms over super eco boost when he has copy eco is always a better thing. Because at least we have an eco power that we can use that doesn't really um, feed his copy eco unlike super eco boost would. So it's just great stuff. He gets up the quad dots instantly to those blacks. So I expect him to wait a bit more before upgrading, but that's completely okay by me. He's of course trying to stall rounds by uh, placing his alley in the back, but when we're anti-stalling ourselves like to the max, there's really no point. Like there's no difference to uh, having your heli in the middle or in the back when your opponent is max anti-stalling and you're not, you're not doing anything to make them stall rounds like send some balloons, then there's absolutely no difference. Uh, okay. So yeah, that's why he has his heli in the middle now. That makes way more sense already. He's going to pop AI a bit sooner and that's going to make his defense better. So since he has copy eco, we're just not going to send at him again. Because yeah, that's the problem with copy eco. You can't feed it, you can't rush it when they have lightning uh, to pair with it. It's a really good duo, but we're going to be fine regardless because we're not feeding it at all, which means he has no eco power really. And uh, it's just a very greedy game, basically. Because he can't send at me, because um, otherwise it would ruin his copy eco, and I can't send at him because it would feed his copy eco. Make sense? Okay, so he seems to play like he has ace. If he had glue, I'd expect him to place it on round 10 to greed further, but I guess he must have ace as a third tower, which is not that common, actually. I really wasn't expecting it. Okay, so now he uses up copy eco, but that's completely useless, it barely gave him anything. And uh, it looks like he's preparing more defense. So... I mean, he's been saving up a whole lot. It's kind of a problem. I guess we'll find out what his third tower is. Okay, it is glue, okay. So we're just going to send way more way way more and it's going to make him die nice <laughs> see how free the strategy is it's so easy to play too you just have a few balloons to send like a few balloons to press and a few balloons to send and you just win like that isn't that just great okay so let's move on to the next one okay and now we have error glitch which are by the looks of it is not the best opponent in the world 50 percent win rate low medallions low badges but that's okay. We all start somewhere, right? So he skips, we get to Riverside. We absolutely don't want that map, it's extremely long. And uh, we get Battle Sands instead, which my strat is already way more usable on, so let's do this. Uh, this is probably going to be the final game of the video, so I just want to tell you guys, if you enjoyed so far, consider subscribing. It's only the press of a button, doesn't take up much of your time, and it provides me so much of more of a boost to uh, get YouTube to recommend, and to recommend this kinds of videos to um, so many more people. So yeah, if you want more people to, uh, y you know, if you found my tips useful, you want more people to see them, definitely consider subscribing, leaving a like on the video, and of course, commenting your thoughts on the video down below, what I can do to improve, what was good, what was bad. Uh, you know, just maybe tell me a funny joke if you want, I suppose. You do you, really. So, he has Tag Shooter, and uh, by the looks of it... Also, my Dotling Spot is bad, but... <laughs> that, that's... By the looks of it, he's ecoing, is what I was trying to say, but... I should have placed my Dotling over there, it's a way better spot. I don't know why I placed it over here. That's just, I don't know, me playing on autopilot. It's completely fine though. It's still an okay spot, it's just not the best. The best spot would be over here. Like, uh, exactly, I'm gonna show with Dotling. This spot exactly is the best one. So he gets up his blade shooter instantly. I don't know if, he, if it has faster shooting or not. Yeah, it does, so we don't even need to send at that. If it didn't have faster shooting, I would have considered um, I would have considered um, sending pinks, but yeah, this just defends them, so we don't need to actually send anything. 
Now we're just going to place this boomer down to make sure that these blues get popped, delayered, and as a result, we can install the rounds better. Uh, round five now, now hit, and uh, we have 250 eco, which is not something I'm used to. He's sending pinks for no reason. I'm pretty intrigued by how this guy is playing, but you know, it's fine. We move, we move. So we send blacks at him because this, this spot leaks. And uh, we're just going to, you know, keep ecoing with with blacks, I guess, get us some eco and keep farming on until eventually round eight hits. And when round eight does hit, we can probably rush with yellows. Uh, what he will need to defend round eight is, um, is two blade shooters, if we send enough, that is. But I don't think I'm going to send that much. I don't know. I'm going to see. So this spot can actually leak to blacks, the darling spot that I'm using, so... Yeah, we're actually going to leak a bit, but that, that's okay. We don't mind leaking much when it's passive strategies, and he gets up his blade shooter already, so we don't even need to rush that anymore. I don't know why he's buying up all the defense that he needs before, um, before I force it. Just make sure to not buy any defense like he does, unless uh, it gets forced on you. Also, these region whites are a very bad rush. It just forces me to do this, but it's really not much. It wastes a lot of money to send a region like this. Uh, anyway, you don't want to get up defense pre preemptively like he's doing right there, but um, instead you want to wait for your opponent to send you blooms and then get up the defense, because it's going to make them waste money on uh, sending you blooms. And um, you know, the more they have to send at you, the better, always. That's something to just keep in mind. He has Wizard, and uh, we don't know what his third tower is because he's ecoing, but yeah. He has Super Eco Boost, and he hasn't revealed anything else to me. However, I do expect passive powers. I would be shocked if he had anything else. So yeah, he gets up two Wizards in very bad spots. I would place my Wizards here or here, like my Boomerang is right now. But <laughs> yeah, it's fine. So he has monkey acid, okay. And now we're just going to use camera gear efficiency. We're going to use budget balloons. We're just going to send now. Uh, also, my bad, I should have used um, budget balloons before camera gear efficiency. We're just going to knock out the slave vault right as he gets it up. And this should go through. Yeah, nice one. All right, we take a dub on round 13 for the last game. So yeah, GG's to air glitch. So uh, yeah, that was the easiest strategy to use in free power-ups. Um, although, be wary that it's not going to make you win every time. Uh, I did have a few losses that I did cut out from this video uh, because my commentary on them was really bad I, and I ended up playing really poorly and making mistakes, which um, I don't want to show you the wrong way to play a strat to you guys. Uh, so yeah, I did cut those out of the video, but uh, I can tell you what not to do with the strategy in the pinned comments below. I'm going to do that actually. Uh, so yeah, feel, feel free to read that if you want more tips on how to play the strategy. Uh, although it's very straightforward, so keep that in mind. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and uh, I'll see you guys in the next one. I'm probably going to be playing boosts only for the record, so yeah, look forward to that. Uh, Alright, I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out guys, have a good one everybody, bye bye.